Now we get to the second problem, the second example I have, B. And here's my function. So again, if you remember, A was sketch the curve, B find the velocity, speed, acceleration and speed, and sketch all three on the graph. Again, normally when I sketch a graph of a vector equation or parametric equation, x equal natural log of t and y equal t. So that means t equal e to the x. It didn't register. Put that right there. And I know what the graph looked like. Exponential graphs, I know exactly how they look. 0, 1, 1, 2.7. They're like parabolas, but they grow a lot faster. Here we go. Now, I do know, due to the domain, something that here it didn't come up because they're both positive. But here, remember we talked about domain? I know the domain, t has to be bigger than 0. It can't even equal 0, which means I need to really take into account that much. That's very important to know, so that you wouldn't get really now. I could pick t equal 1, t equal 2, t equal 3 to figure out direction, but since I'm going to have to do, since I'm going to have to sketch a graph of the derivative, the velocity, right? Find the velocity function in part two. So sketch a graph. I didn't really graph it because I didn't give it direction. But the velocity could tell me the direction. V of t is just the derivative of this. The derivative of this is 1 over t1. Evaluated at t equal 1. So might as well just do it right away. Acceleration is negative 1 over t squared 0 evaluated at t equal 1 is negative 1, 0. And the speed, since we're evaluating that at the point, might as well use the point that's radical 2. So that pretty much gives me everything that I need. I got my vectors, right? This is really r sub 1 prime. This is a sub 1. And I need to get on the curve. It doesn't say that. I need to find r of 1 first. That is natural log of 1, which is 0, 1. So this first vector, green, gets me on the curve. I must be on the curve for this to make sense. That's r of 1. Now, if I go for my velocity function <coughs> my velocity is 1 1 well this is what students do they say 1 1 they say there it is uh you get no credit for that part from the point move one to the right one up that's the velocity since the velocity is pointing in that direction i know how this curve runs and how does acceleration point negative one zero from this point, negative 1, 0 is pointing in this direction. If you draw that as a circle, if you go to the point where you're at and you draw a circle, you'll notice the acceleration is always pointing toward the mid of that circle. And if you're asking why am I graphing the circle down here, direction tells you which way you're really looking, whether you're going to go this way or this way. Just saying. You don't need that, of course. I think we have one more. Yep, we're blessed. How does this work? The parametric equation, x equal cosine of t minus 2, which means x minus 2 squared equal cosine squared of t, and y equal 
the sine of t plus 3, which means y minus 3 squared equals sine squared of t. This says, and I have plenty of space. This says, x minus 2 squared plus y minus 3, oh, plus, right? Equal a 1. I know what that is. That's a circle. Uh, that's a circle. Centered, <clears throat> centered at negative 2, 3, with a radius of 1. The circle looks like this. There it is. Uh, nope. We want it to be... Okay, as accurate as possible. Again, I need direction. I could find direction now by picking two values at t. t equals 0, t equals 1. So just to demonstrate. At t equals 0, I am at negative 2, 3. Negative 2, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2. Okay, what went wrong? At t equals 0, I am at... Oh, negative 1, 3. I'm right here. And at t equal pi over 2 in 1.57 seconds, if I'm talking about points, right, if I'm doing the graph by myself using parametric, uh, that's going to be negative 2 and 1 plus 4. Negative 1, negative 2, 1, 2, 3. Here I am. So I know the direction points this way. I could do that work, or I could save myself the work, since I am going to find the velocity and acceleration anyways. In the second part of this, I'll say, well, look, the velocity function is actually, what? The velocity function is negative the sine of t, cosine of t. Evaluated at pi over 3, that will be, that's 60 degrees, right? And again, if you ever forgotten that, 60 degrees, sine is 1 half, and this is radical 3 over 2. Okay, good. Acceleration is negative the cosine of t, negative the sine of t, evaluated at pi over 3, that is negative radical 3 over 2, negative 1 half. Very good. And, oops, C. speed I would say the speed is the square root of and again it's right there the magnitude of the velocity that would be one fourth plus three fourth that's really a one this is a unit but we already know that it's a unit circle right okay now what the most crucial part I need to be on r of pi over 3. I need to be on this, not from the origin, from the circle. Cosine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2 minus 2. Sine is 1 half plus 3. This is 0 0.9. 0 0.9 minus 2 is negative 1.1 and 3.5. So, negative 1.1 and one two three point five. I need the vector to get me on the curve. That's a must. From this point, from that specific point, my velocity is negative zero point nine. Uh, negative one half. Negative one half. And 0 0.9. Do you see that that matches the direction? That's the velocity evaluated at pi over 3. And the acceleration from this point is negative 0 0.9, negative a half. Do you see you're kind of sort of pointing toward the center? That's always what acceleration does.
And there it is. It's very important to grasp this idea. What students do, they draw those three vectors for me from the origin. You get no credit for that part. You can't do that. The last aspect of this is really simple. It's just your traditional integration. So take a derivative that's easy. Take integration that's easy. If I want to integrate this vector, I will say that is the integral from 1 to 5 of 3p squared dt. The integral from 1 to 5 square root of p plus 3 dt. And the integral from 1 to 5 of e to the t dt. That is nothing more than the advent t cubed evaluated from 1 to 5. Uh, add 1 to the power divided by that. So that's 1 half. 3 halves, 2 thirds evaluated from 1 to 5. And e to the t evaluated from 1 to 5. That would be... Uh, 5 cubed minus 125 minus 1. That would be 2 thirds into 5, 8. Uh, square root of 8 cubed minus 1. And this would be uh, uh, e to the 5 minus e to the 1. That's pretty much it. You're done. This is a definite integral, and if they gave us an undefinite integral, what we have to do, we have to pretty much figure out C, that is, give, find R of T given the derivative. Well, we know that the integral of R prime of T dt is R of T plus C. C is a vector, right? You could do the components, you could do it doesn't really matter it's up to you so when i look at this i'm really looking at well if i'm gonna find r of t that's gonna be the integral and i i write this notation that ijk that's t squared e to the 2t and 1 over t dt r of t now you could do this it's up to you you could do t cubed over 3 plus c1 if you want e to the 2t over t plus c2 and natural log of absolute value of t plus c3 you could either do that or you could do this It doesn't really matter. Either or. Either way, we have to find C because they gave us initial conditions. We say, this is my answer. In that answer, R of 0 is actually what? C1, 1 half plus C2. Oh, I forgot all about that. My mistake, I apologize. I made those on the spot. Let's make that plus 1. Crap. I got to be careful when I make those things. I make those on the spot as we move on. So if I put a 0 in there, I'll get a natural log upon which is 0, C3. And I know what that equals. That equals 2, 1, negative 1. which means C1 equal 2, 1 half plus C2 equal 1, that means C2 equal 1 half, and C3 equal negative 1. So there's my answer, like we said. All what you have to do is go in and say that's T cubed over 3 plus 2, that's E to the 2T over 2 plus 1 half, and that is natural log of T plus 1 minus 1. That would be my final answer, including the initial condition. And that would be it for those sections.